Hey YouTube, welcome back to another review here. Tom has opened. It's going to be one of my English reviews. Uh, felt like one of those. Uh, I promised that I would do them more often. Um, I try to be a man of my word. And um, today we're back, as you can see, with something new to me, new brewery for me, not a new brewery per se. Uh, Labiatis, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, Labiatis from Latvia. Uh, pagan brews, as they themselves say, pagan brews. And if you look at their stuff, they're, they're... these four beers dropped in the Netherlands a couple of weeks ago. Uh, picked are these four? I picked up four by these guys. Their catalog of beers is like fucking insane. It's nuts. Planning on buying some stuff from them directly. Um, but yeah, these guys do do wonderful stuff. I've seen things like uh, an oatmeal stout and, and, and pale ale and, and double IPAs. But they got things like a herbal amber ale. They got like these, uh, they work a lot with botanics, botanicals from um, different plants, do things like uh, braggots, some very interesting stuff like that. And it just it just grabbed my interest. And this here is their Akmanrex. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's their herbal amber ale, inspired by the wild beauty of the west coast of Latvia, wild thyme and heather, both characteristics Characteristic vegetation for the Astur uh, landscape. Pin down the aromatics of the Baltic coast with a touch of earthy slatic hops to complete the taste scape embraced by a high density of light, lightly caramelized malts to recreate the mossy softness on your soul. Water, barley, malt, uh, heather, wild thyme. Hops, yeast, and that's it. 4.5% ADV. Uh, final gravity was 1016. Uh, I think that was the... In Krasa and other things. I'll look it up. Label art, I like this. I don't know what it is. I'm I love those. You see a lot more breweries doing that. You see the, the a lot of like the actual aluminium. It's got this little wraparound thing. It's very clear. They have like colors. They have like their uh yellow line, black line, uh purple line, and they sort of divide not so much by ABV but by type of beer, which I think was very fucking interesting. So just the amber ale by itself. Just so cool to see an amber ale. This is like one of those beer styles that we just don't see enough anymore. Uh, well, no, if you ask me, we don't see them enough anymore. So yeah, I can't wait to get stuff in. I didn't check for a canning date on this or a Best Buy. It's probably on there somewhere. I'll check in a moment. I'm just going to pour this out first. And yeah, that pours like a lovely amber like deep golden hue um almost like the hue of, of good honey uh very nice clear beer look to it um slightly like off white going towards that beige cre cream colored little head like about uh, yay finger rocky bubbles on the bar uh, on the top very nice little tiny bottles uh, uh bubbles on the bottom looks the part of an amber ale Really does look the part of an amber ale. Good lacing on that head, by the way. Very good lacing on that head. That is a good sign. That is a very good sign. I think these guys have been active for like at least 10 years. Let me, by the way, quickly see if there is a Best Buy date on here somewhere. Oh, Best Buy date is uh, June 2025. And then there's a code that says 24533. So I'm guessing this is now about three months old, which is, you know, hella good for a uh, beer like this. I'd say that's enough talking. Let's get stuck in. I can't wait to see what this has to offer. All right. First thing you pick up is like this beautiful, like bready, uh, like, like slightly it goes toward that Märzen or Vienna lager. It's not, a, it's not a lager, it's an ale, but it has that same vibe. I'm getting like slightly roasted, like slightly toasted uh, brown bread uh, with a little bit of honey on it. Uh, the bread is still warm, so you get that real waft of honey. Really goes towards that. Um, there's a herbaceous note to it. It's not like it's popping with things like uh, thyme or the heather. It, it's got like a herbaceous... A uh, floral note to it. Not sure Sladek hops what they're supposed to do. I could quickly Google that in a moment. I will actually because I'm curious. But it has like this eminently drinkable. 
I haven't even tasted it, but it smells like it's going to be eminently drinkable. Very much in towards that really, that bready, that, that slightly caramel thing going on, which again, that typical, <clears throat> um, and I mean this in the most positive way, by the way, in the, like that typical uh, Vienna Lager Märzen thing going on. I, I absolutely adore that, the fact that this is sub 5%, and it's really nice and full in the nose without being overpowering is the first sign of just an eminently quaffable beer. Quaffing is the act of drinking a drink in such a way that more goes over your beard and over your chest and it actually ends up in your mouth. Uh, but that's, again, a very good thing. Again, like I said, slightly herbaceous. It's definitely when you get like to, to, to um, if you're used to cooking, there's a big difference between fresh uh, thyme leaves and dry thyme. And this goes way more towards that lovely sort of like woody herby note, sort of like soft floral thing that you get from thyme. And oddly enough, maybe that that is also the, the honey characteristic that I'm picking up in the nose. Often very good quality honey has like a thyme-like herbaceousness to me, which is coming through here. By the way, carbonation is like very soft, nice little bubbles floating up. I don't think the camera will pick it up, but it is, by the looks of it, it's got this lovely smooth carbonation going on. It doesn't look very aggressive. That makes me very hope hopeful. Um, that's enough chatting about what this thing smells like. Let's see what it does in the taste. I can't wait. Cheers. Yeah. It's like a soft mouthfeel. It's not going to be, you know, chewable or big or bold. We're talking about a 4.5% ABV ale. It again, that's a lovely bitterness, by the way. You get that real brown, bready, slightly toasted, not even like big toast on it, but like slightly toasted. Um, Brown bread with that honey thing again. It's like very malty, lovely towards that caramel thing. Um, the bitterness is just growing and growing and growing. And I love that. Again, uh, I know it's an ale. I know it's an ale. But I am getting the biggest Vienna Lager Märzen vibe going on here. Uh, almost like Festbier. That's a, another thing, like a Festbier, a, a classic German Festbier, is usually somewhere between 5.5 and 6% ABV. This drinks almost, like in terms of impact, it drinks almost more towards that 6% ABV line while being 4.5. That, my friends, is, is gold. That is perfection. You want lower ABV beers with the impact of slightly more ABV. This drinks like... Oh, shit. Sorry. That heather is growing more and more. That it's, it's, it's warming up slightly. It's breathing a little bit in that heather note. That lovely, slightly floral, like... Really? My neighbors are um, doing some work in the backyard. So if you're hearing, like, a power saw here and there or stuff like that, I am so sorry. Yeah, it's that that it's a, it has like this earthy note, but not like when you're walking through like oh, there's so many different kinds of earthy notes, and this is like earthy, not so much earthy, but more like wildlife when you're walking through like a big grassy field, lots of flowers, um, the sun is like uh, shining on it. It's a nice. Balmy 21, 22 degrees Celsius. Everything is just fine and nice. And you, you smell nature. It really does have that impact. A lovely soft sweetness that, that like I said, that, that, that slightly caramel, caramelly honey sweetness with a big, big bitterness on the finish. If you're looking for like big, bold... Super, uh, supremely complex beers, and I swear to God, they probably do these things. I have an 11.4% barley wine from these guys on standby. I've got a double IPA. 
But if you're looking for something that is absolutely crushable, absolutely delightful, delightful, has buckets and buckets of um how am I gonna say this? Because drinkability is probably the best word. Buckets and buckets of drinkability to it, while still being entertaining. You know, you 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 want to take your time every now and then to really savor what's going on, but in the meantime, you can quaff this like a good lager, or like like have it gone in ten minutes. This is danger juice when it comes to that. You can you can drink three, four of these in an hour and just not realize that you are drinking them. Don't put like a four pack or a six pack in a cooler next to you when you have this because they're gonna be gone. It is that drinkable. And I miss beers like this so much. There's a slight minerality to it. It's like you have that minerality in some uh, Berliner Weisses. You have sort of like that min minerality to it. That could probably be the Heather. I don't know. Maybe it's those Slatic hops. I'll look them up in a moment. But it has that sort of minerality to it without the salinity a lot of those beers will have that have that type of minerality. They often have like this sort of salinity to it, this sort of soft, I hate the word here, salty, because then you sh immediately start thinking of different things. And I really wish my neighbors would shut the fuck up. But I'm going to look up those um, Slatek. I said Slatek. Slatek hops. I am really curious because a cross between Sass and Northern Brewer. Um, let me just quickly hop. Wait, my mouse is being a dick. Hop profile. Hmm. Fruity flavor profile with an essence of peach, passion fruit, and grapefruit. I suppose if you put them to a certain use, the, the uh, when you add the grapefruit, I get the I get like the, the 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 citrusy quality of it. But here it's more. I suppose there's a soft fruity note to there, but it's not something I'm picking up. Shit. <laughs> now when you read it, you pick it up. Yeah, I get it now. The citrusy note I was getting, but I suppose I see what they're talking about when they're talking about. Peach and passion fruit. That's nice. Mm. Mostly though, it's everything I just said earlier. And this is absolutely fucking delightful. I'm really happy I bought this. I have a Vitbia, I have a double IPA, and I have that barley wine. I want to order some stuff from them because they have things like braggots and other like beers brewed with herbs and stuff like that. They have a wild program. They're doing some things with bourbon barrels. So I'm just stoked to see what else they've got. This really is a discovery for me. I can't wait to try their other beers. But if, you, if you're if you from Eastern Europe, if you're in anywhere close to Latvia and you, you're like, I can I can go on a couple of days of a trip and, and, and spend some time there because apparently they have a great brew pub as, brew pub as well. I'll even tell you how many calories are in there. I don't need to know that. Anyway, yeah. Good stuff. Go go try Labiatis if you've never had. And if you have, I'm really curious as to your opinion, your thoughts on it. So, yeah, that's it for this review. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Uh, in the description box below, you'll find some links to all of my social media, a link to the Dutch Beer Collective and a link to mysterybeer.nl. And like I said, leave some comments because I'm really curious what you guys think of Labiatis. I hope I'm pronouncing this correct correctly. But um, yeah, let me know what you think of Abmanrex. Again, I hope I said that correctly. And we'll see all of you guys in another review soon. Cheers.